Hello friends, it's Lizzie here from Arcane and Stellar with a no contact, what are they thinking type of reading. <laughs> so it's a pick a card and uh, we have four piles. I want to say a huge, mega huge thank you. Guys, you left so many comments on my last video. I felt pretentious doing that. I recorded that reading actually last week and uh, I wasn't even going to post it because I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That sounds like kind of like I'm begging for attention or something. And I don't... I want to be direct and I do like when you guys comment because then I get to interact with you although I'm still catching up on the comments from that last video. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that was a lot. You guys surprised the heck out of me. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I really like am flabbergasted. Thank you. I really am thankful that you guys all did that. Thank you. And of course, I do want to encourage comments, of course, to continuing forward, but um, I would like actually to get to know some of you. I would like to know, what are you currently like watching? Are you watching a TV, a TV show? Are you binging a TV show? Are you reading a book? Are you playing a certain game? Let me know what you guys are up to. I've been, uh, th maybe I'll get some good suggestions too about things to check out. Like maybe if you're reading something great or I love reading. Um, I like watching stuff too. I've been super duper into the Aurora Tea Garden series on Hallmark. I don't know if you guys guys have seen those mystery movies, but I just love the cheesiness, and I just, I like it so much. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing, <laughs> but uh, with some of my free time. I've been trying to take more free time. There was a, a period there at the beginning of the year where I didn't watch, like, or do anything besides, like, reading, basically, cards constantly. And then I, I've been trying to take more time for myself, actually. But, uh... So that's been something I've been doing, and uh, I've been going to the library more and, and, and checking out some books as well. So I'm going to start a manga, Children of the Whales. So I, I, I got the first manga of that, and if anyone's read that, let me know if it's good. But anyways, um, let's get started on your reading. There are four piles, like I said. One with Angelite. Sorry, I'm going to save the, I'll save the stones because... Uh, one girl asked me if I could do that, and I always forget. So number one, we have Angelite. With number two, we have Unikite. Number three, Aventurine. Thank you for the confirmation in the previous video, by the way. Uh, I couldn't remember. And then we had uh, pile number four with Rainbow Moonstone. So that's the deal. That's what we've got. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started now. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, all that information is down below in the description box. There's a link to my Etsy store where you can purchase a reading as well as links to my Amazon wish list. I always do a reading as a thank you for anyone who gets something off my Amazon wish list. So that's always another option for those of you that prefer gift giving as I always say. But uh, thank you guys so much for your support and I'll see you in your reading. Hey guys, if you chose pile number one with Angelite, this is going to be your reading. So let's find out the person on your mind that you're in no contact with. What are they What are they thinking about you? What's kind of going on inside of their head? So first of all, let's get started. We have from the literary witch's oracle, the hedgehog. This, okay, the hedgehog, first of all, uh, in, in this deck, uh, the, the keywords associated with it are vulnerability, uh, hiding the heart, and uh, tenderness actually which is true because to hedgehogs they're so like they look so spiky but they're so cute and uh but with the hiding the heart part in particular this person could feel that you're hiding your heart in some way from from them they could be thinking that uh and this could be vice versa too it could be also that they feel like hiding their heart from you at this time um to kind of put on a show or hide their their, their heart away from you and and vice versa like i said it could be on the other side they could be you know perceiving you that way as well um it, like i said general readings and it's kind of probably going to depend it could be mutual too again if you guys are both kind of ignoring each other uh they're hiding their heart they think you're hiding your heart and that's just how it's going for now but there's also a lot of tenderness right with the hedgehog so they could be having tender thoughts about you thinking about you in a you know kind way or thinking about the the kinder sweeter moments between the two of you and, and generally they maybe have a favorable view of you um even if you're not in contact okay so for some of you it might be that you know you haven't had a lot of problems with them or for some of you or for others of you they just have a high opinion of you we also have healing and it says old wounds and childhood issues need revisiting so this might be a period in which both of you are healing from something um they might think that you're doing some healing uh of your own 
okay? They might think that they need to do some healing as well. Um, so it could go, go, go either way. We have the High Priestess. Uh, so this does indicate that they kind of perceive you as being a bit mysterious at this time. Uh, they might not really... They might feel like you're blocking them out a little bit. You're not really giving in to them. They might get intuitive feelings about you or you kind of come up into their head kind of like a light bulb. Uh, like they have these thoughts of you that kind of pop out of nowhere, almost like synchronicities or something like that. But uh, we also have this Nine of Swords. Let me see here. I'm just going to applaud the rest of the cards. Let's not like, uh, let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Um, okay, so the Nine of Swords and the Two of Pentacles. Okay, for some of you, especially if this is like an ex or somebody that has broken up with you or there's been some sort of problem between the two of you, this person may be feeling like you are getting your life back in balance, that you are trying to take care of things, avoiding perhaps um, thinking of them, for, you know. As well, this person could also perceive you, like I said, kind of being a bit mysterious and in control of communication and your thoughts and mind. So kind of like in a mode of Control, I guess you could just say. That's the best way to put it. And with the lovers and the three of wands, you know, there's a good chance that your person could be perceiving you as looking towards other people. Um, maybe different relationships as well. That you... There is a, a longing here, though. I look at Ross here. This is a friend's deck. And I do see Ross, like, looking at the airplane. And isn't this, like, right around the time that he's going to leave and then Rachel comes to get him at the airport? And he's kind of, like, not wanting to leave because he doesn't want to leave, you know exactly <laughs> and uh it's almost like this person's like longing and look at it's it's paired with the lovers right which is ross and rachel as well so it's almost like this person's waiting for you to like kind of come towards them and like sweep them off their feet or they're thinking about doing the same thing uh for some of you like obviously we see this airplane here there might be distance for some of you there might be like a long distance relationship going on or like i said that longing i always thought of airports as very happy places, yet very sad places, you know. I love traveling, but I remember I always hated leaving. And I always cried when I'd leave. Um, but I grew up flying a lot because my parents were divorced and stuff. So, uh, But I always loved traveling at the same time, so it was like mixed feelings. <laughs> but uh, So maybe there's like some sort of like mixed feelings, like, like this longing sadness, yet at the same time. And that could be too, because the Two of Pentacles, it's sort of like a mixed bag there. Um, balance. <clears throat> and with that Nine of Swords, it could be that this person's also balancing their feelings a bit, or trying to. They kind of maybe flip back and forth between, I'm fine and I'm not fine. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's see. I'm going to take some astrology cards here, actually, and see what's up. Those are just part of one spirit. What is their person thinking of them right now? What's their person thinking? What? Woo! We got one. Let's see. Ooh, we've got Sagittarius. Ooh, very interesting. So Sagittarius is the is the how well the the sign associated with the house of travel, um, foreign places. So there might be some sort of distance between the two of you. They could be also thinking that you are traveling somewhere for some of you, or, or that you're yeah you're far away from them, or that you're setting your sights also on something else in life. Perhaps is you know they they could be thinking that you're moving on to other options, other people, sort of being like free reign, doing your own thing. Funnies, I've never known many Sagittariuses in my life, which is crazy. I've only ever had one I've known pretty closely, and she was a student of mine, and I really got on with her very well. But unfortunately, like, I never run into any. Isn't that wild? Are you a Sagittarius? Let me know. <laughs> what do you think of Sagittariuses? Okay, let's see here. What is their person thinking? Oopsie. Sorry, that was loud. We also have the sun. So Sagittarius and the sun. Oh, that's like my placement, ninth house sun. Uh, well, okay, they could think of you as somebody... Well, first of all, I would say there's a lot of intelligence to you. Now I'm going to sound like I'm tooting my own horn here. <laughs> oh, no, there, there could be... Maybe they think that you are a traveling or something like that let me try to think of this uh there also could be a focus on your own justice and your own well-being 
you know, Sagittarius comes after the eighth house, which is a house of like reformation, of crisis, of uh, rebirth. And it's sort of like that, that energy of coming out of that and exploring something different with a sense of optimism, like a renewed hope. So it could be that they are perceiving you as somebody who's doing that. Perhaps if you were once really upset about this situation, they might feel like you're more balanced now. Um, they might perceive you that way. And that could very much be because you guys are kind of trying to keep control of your appearance and how things look. You know what I'm saying? Okay, now, I think maybe I'll grab... I don't know which ones I'm going to grab. Let me see. I think I want to grab the these two. Let's see. We have the language of flowers. Janelle. Got for the channel. Let's see here. What is pile number one's person thinking about them? Those are just pile number one. What is the person on their mind thinking about them? Jeez Louise. We got two. Ooh, we've got wisteria, longevity, plan for and take the dedicated path. Ooh, okay. And then we have orange blossom, enthusiasm. The best can be here, believe it. Now look at that. We have enthusiasm and longevity. And that really reminds me of Sagittarius. So sort of like looking forward towards other things in your life. Uh, perhaps some of you are like, you know, going after your goals or, or what you want to do, what your path is calling you to do. Uh, maybe you're going in a different direction than they are and they, you know, perceive you as such as like kind of pursuing your own goals. The best can be here, believe it. So there's a sense of optimism, like I said, uh, the optimism of the ninth house. And then we have, of course, that longevity, plan for and take the dedicated path. And so there might be some plans that they're thinking, that you're trying to think of long-term goals and plans. That could be very much how your person's perceiving you at this time. Maybe they think that that's what you're trying to do in this meantime. Maybe you're trying to heal something and figure out what's the best for you in the long term um, and I know that's kind of like of course that's gonna probably for some of you that you know you're probably in different situations so I'll just keep that as you know kind of vague um, in terms of what that might mean for you personally but um, I can see that they definitely perceive you as somebody who's after something uh, probably your own happiness and your own um, well-being we have grounded keep your roots and stand taller than the trees so a sense of security as well and, a set, yeah, like inner security, outer security, that focus there. And pride as well. Maybe that's what they see with the hedgehog too, that, that the protecting your heart. Like maybe a bit of a pride aspect. We have journey, branch out to new worlds. Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. <laughs> see? That's just what I was talking about, like a new journey after a, a dark period or something. Uh, or and, and it doesn't have to be that some of you haven't had a dark period and that's okay um, and, and that's probably better lucky ones <laughs> but for those of you you know there's just like they, they could think of you as having just so much potential um, to, to pursue things and they, that's where you're headed um, I do feel like for a lot of you maybe there was some sort of anxiety in the past that they might have thought you had um, and that you're either fighting it now or you kind of gotten over it like I, it depends because general reading but um, and how, how long you guys have been out of contact, you know what I'm saying? Because if it's been, and why you're out of contact, of course, as well. Um, but yeah, I love this. Okay, so yeah, I would definitely say that your person, to summarize, well, really sees you as a free spirit in some kind of way. There's something uh, freeing about you, also very mysterious, as I mentioned. They are not quite sure. Uh, they might not even know how to reach you. It's like there's this guarded type of uh, feeling. For some of you, maybe you block them or something. They can't really... But they want to see you, I feel. Uh, and that could drive some of you, for some of you, this might drive your person's nuts. If you've blocked them or something, there could be a lot of like, ugh, I can't like even check how they're doing anymore, you know? Um, but I do think that this person, like I said, with the lovers and the three of wands, I think it's going to go one of two ways. If you've started to like date again or, you know, see people, they could be thinking that you're checking out your options elsewhere, looking for love elsewhere. Uh, for others of you, it might be that, again, like I said, this long-term goals and sort of choosing perhaps, even for some of you, choosing something else, not even another partnership, but like other things in your life, other options and moving towards those things. Um, again, there's like this kind of focus and hope for the future, but still that like they still, and I feel like they're also kind of on the same page, but at the same time, there's this like longing that you'll somehow like come back or that things will come back together in some way, even though maybe they're not interested in like taking that chance to like communicate with you at this time. Because I feel like a lot of you, this person isn't, 
they're not necessarily, I think, I, I don't know. I just want to say, like, the vibe I get here is that this person's kind of waiting for you to contact them or they don't feel like it's going to happen or something like that. But, um, yeah, that's what I've got for you guys. I chose pile number one. I really hope that this gave you some insight into the person on your mind. And uh, if you like the reading, of course, letting me know would be amazing. Uh, leaving a comment, always helpful uh, and for the engagement. And then, of course, you know, liking and subscribing if you're new. But thank you guys so much for your support, especially if you didn't hear the intro. You guys blew the video up with comments last time, and I was just like, no way! <laughs> I was so excited. So thank you so much. And uh, if you want a personal reading, all that information is in my description box. There's a link to my Etsy store where you can purchase readings. Um, I have quite a few different kinds there. And then um, as well, there's my Amazon wish list. And as many of you know that I've been watching the channel for the past year or so, <laughs> I do personal readings as a thank you for anyone who gets something off my Amazon wish list. So it's just another option. Some people really like doing that. They like getting me something like a surprise. And uh, they like getting a reading that way. So. And, uh, but so anyways, that's your options for readings if you want a personal one. And uh, I wish you all the very, very, very best. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next reading. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you chose pile number two with the Unikite, this is going to be your reading. So let's get inside the head of the person that's on your mind. And so I, I, I'm assuming that there's no contact here. That was kind of the basis of my reading. And so we'll find out what's going in their head and what they're thinking currently. So we do have the house. I'm going to say something. Actually, it's funny. I took some Lenormand cards, but then I decided not to because it was kind of like a loaded deck. Not a loaded deck. It was just like, they're only like, you know, 30-something cards. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to do that. And so I changed my mind um, as I was shuffling and I pulled it away. But you guys got the house in that deck too. And I thought that was weird that that came out a second time. So this person, I mean the house, what, are, what is a house? It's, it's, it's a sanctuary of some kind. So they could be feeling that you are kind of withdrawn, that you are kind of private at this time, that perhaps they could be thinking that you're staying at home a lot. I mean, obviously, as I currently am filming this, and this is timeless, you know, it's COVID, so maybe they could just perceiving you as um, being at home a lot. Uh, maybe you guys are, you know, on vacation or, or I don't know you know it could it could indicate a lot of different things of course in a general reading but there is a sense of privacy or withdrawal um, I think of when we think of the house um, it could also be spending time with your family and uh, just kind of tending to your own inner world at this time that's how they could perceive you and I, that would make sense I guess in a, in no contact um, you know that kind of reading so let's see what else we've got. We've also got mastery. You've learned the spiritual lesson. Now this person could also, and by the way, the, the energy can go vice versa, obviously in these. This person could also be thinking that that's what they want to do is kind of be withdrawn as well. Maybe, uh, I and, and I get that also because we have this mastery card. It says you've learned the spiritual lesson. So that kind of indicates that this person is assuming that there's been a lesson learned between the two of you or that something has been understood. Um, on, I, on both of your sides, perhaps, as well. Uh, maybe for some of you where this person has kind of uh, messed up, they might be recognizing where they've kind of messed up in this situation, or they might be thinking about, where did I go wrong, or what, how did this happen, or what could I have done better, or maybe, you know, like I said, for some of you, it's like this person did something, you know, jerky. For others of you, maybe not, you know. Um, so let's not, uh, let's, let's just let you guys, um, I'll let you, try to apply that as it as you as you may um but we also have the tower here uh, as our thoughts this is the new movie tarot i got i pre-ordered look at my spider web can you see it moving it's like fluctuating <laughs> i told i told you guys about it in the last reading and, and some people had some really good ideas for the spider's name i haven't seen it recently i didn't kill it or do anything bad to it i don't know i think it's just hiding out in the rocks there it comes out sometimes but i haven't seen it recently but I haven't been looking either it was kind of shoved off to the side anyways getting back into your reading sorry about that um <laughs> we have the tower and the queen of swords so this person on your mind could see you as 
there could be a little bit of past aggression or a fight for some of you. There could have been an argument or a disagreement of some kind. Again, there could have just been a breakdown of communication um, where things sort of just shattered or went as they must, you know, or may or had to or, how you know, however it went down. Um, we have the Queen of Swords. So if this is representing you know, probably what your person's thinking of you. So viewing you as a queen of swords, somebody very logical, perhaps a bit, she looks pretty like tough, doesn't she? So there might be a vibe that they're getting off you that's kind of tough at this time. Actually, what movie is that from? I'm gonna look it up in the little book. Let me see here. Does it say the queen? It doesn't say what movie it is. I guess it only does on the ma the major arcana. Dang it. Oh, okay. Does anyone know what this is from? I know this is from, what, uh, Pulp Fiction. But uh, I don't know what the other ones are from. Anyways, I'm just rambling in this one, aren't I? This is Judy Garland from A Star, A Star is Born. And then The Hermit is... That looks like, uh, what's her name? I know who it is, the actress, Meryl Streep, out of Africa. Okay, I haven't seen that movie in years. <laughs> okay, um, anyways, getting back to the, the reading here. So we have a person who perceives you as perhaps a bit cold at this time, okay? Um, a bit guarded too, because this Queen of Swords, and I always think of the Queen of Swords as a bit guarded, somebody a bit skeptical, somebody that might be a little bit suspicious or think twice, you know? And it could be because they've done something that was really upsetting or disturbing to you um, or kind of rude or something that just sort of kind of broke everything up um, in a way. And they could feel as if they've really messed up. We have the star coming out right after it, which is interesting because that's, the star usually does indicate, it is usually, it, well, it doesn't usually, it comes after the tower. <laughs> so it, it represents a period of healing. And uh, I could see that your person is perhaps, they could be thinking of you as kind of healing yourself at this time. There also could be the vibe of, uh, you know, them wanting to heal things with you too. But yet we have that hermit. So it, there is that indication that you've pulled away. They perceive you, this person, for all of you watching, I would say that this person in some way has you know, <clears throat> that you've withdrawn from this connection in some kind of way, that you're not really perhaps open uh, to the connection at this time or that you've sort of gone within. Again, the house is there and the hermit, that's very much withdrawn energy. So they could be, and and uh, like I said, this can be reflective of both, uh, both of you at this time. You guys are both kind of doing this, um, pulling away from each other. And uh, let's see here. There is like a sense of hope here with the star that things will get out of the situation in which this person feels kind of stuck. I do feel like this person does get, and I didn't get this with pile number one. I, I feel like for a lot of you, this person's probably going to reach out in the future, um, at a, at a, at a, probably in the future um, for most of you um, because we do have this eight of wands which indicates like wanting to see you wanting to you know come towards you wanting to message you it can indicate like yeah messages coming in so I do feel like after some period of time you may hear from this person again otherwise though this person also if you if you feel like they haven't contacted you in forever and that seems like it's you know not possible um, then I would say that maybe this person could perceive you as having moved on um, okay, so if it has been quite some time since you've spoken to this person, because um, I know some of you watch and, you know, there's a, you know, somebody that you haven't talked to in years, um, it could be that they, you know, see you as having moved on towards something else in your life and you just aren't, it's like maybe for some of you this person might just see you as done, like you, yeah, I did that, been there, you know, got the, got the prize and didn't like it and I moved on, you know, um, Pile number two, Spirit, what is their person thinking about them? But I do sense for a lot of you, this person has hope that things will iron it's themselves out. Yeah, we have Jupiter, so this, there, there could be some distance here. I know I said that as well in pile number one, but Jupiter can represent international travel to me, foreigners, um, different... Uh, there's also enlightenment with Jupiter too. This desire to, you know, know the know the truth or to move forward in an optimistic way, and uh, 
we have Leo as well. So moving towards perhaps more romance. Leo, this person I could say with this, first of all, could see you as very well educated. They could think of you as somebody who is very well experienced, that has some wisdom to you. Um, again, with this mastery, like you've learned a spiritual lesson, for some of you, this person might think that you've learned a lesson with them. Uh, and that's why you moved on. You're like, uh, yeah, I'm not... I already did that. I'm not doing it again. You know what I mean? Um, that's going to probably resonate for some of you. But we have Leo. So I could say that this person admires you greatly. Leo is, you know, associated with the fifth house and, and you know, romance, children, hobbies, and entertainment and good stuff, you know? And so that does indicate positive feelings. This person, I would say, finds you to shine. I love it because we have that star with the stars born and it's just kind of very performancey. So there is something very, I think, beautiful about you guys to this person. They really like the way that you look. They admire you if they get to see you anyways. They might also just have those memories of times where you guys had good times together. And I do feel like, though, for most of you, this person is hoping for a better outcome in the future um, between the two of you, hope, uh, for the most part. Like I said, unless perhaps it's like one of those situations where, you know, you haven't spoken in years and you know this person isn't going to reach out of nowhere. Um, let's see, pile number two. What is their person thinking? So we have everlasting daisy, fortitude, be brave and dig deep. Ooh, yeah. Well, I can see that bravery here with the Queen of Swords. I always think of the Queen of Swords as someone very brave, who does something very brave. Um, for some of you, that you might have done something brave that's really impressed this person in your life. Maybe it's cutting them out. Maybe it's doing something else in your life that they know was hard. And we also have Camellia. Peace. Be calm and calm will come. Wow. Okay. And that makes sense here with that, like that star um, card. Finding that inner peace and sort of that getting yourself together. Too, the Hermit's all about inner peace as well. Seeking inner guidance, inner wisdom, inner peace. Uh, and doing that separately from somebody. It's sort of like recharging in some way. For some of you, if, if this has been a habit between you and the person where you sort of <laughs> come back and forth, this person may be expecting you to come back. If, if this has been a pattern that you've had where maybe you guys fight, you kind of recharge, you pull away, you recharge, and then you come back into their life, this person could be expecting that another round, um, by the way. Okay? So for some of you, if that's uh, something you've engaged in before, they could be expecting that once again. We also have forget me, not remembrance. Memories in the past hold the key. Like I said... When I talked about that Leo card and I was talking about the memories, like they might be mem having memories of you, like looking at old photos or, or just admiring you or something or admiring past moments. Wow, okay. So, let's see. Anything else or shall I stop there? Yeah, I would say that some of you could expect this person to reach out, but some of them might be, I don't know, but some of them might be expecting you to reach out. I'm not sure. Like I said, if there's been a habit, um, I'm going to get one more um, card here for you guys. If there's a habit of uh, back and forth stuff like that, like I had mentioned, they could be expecting you to reach out. Angels, do you have any messages about this person and their thoughts? No. Mm. Yep. Oh my gosh, look at this. We have no trust and you're ready. I wonder if this person's waiting for you to be ready. Um, so to kind of come back, like when you're in the mood or something like that. It's just like, no. Which reminds me of that Queen of Swords is kind of like, yeah, no. You know? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and, and then we have this trust, you know, trusting that everything will be okay. I feel like that's a person's thought that they're trying to trust that this will evolve the way that it's meant to evolve. That things will go the way that they're supposed to go. Um, and for some of you, this person might be, you know, trying to learn a spiritual lesson. Or in, not on, on a conscious level, but subconsciously. Um, but we have as well, you're ready. So I really get the sense that's, a, that's when you're going to be ready. Like, they're just waiting for when you're ready to contact them again. Um, especially for those of you, like I had mentioned, where... It, and like I said, this is... Uh, I know this isn't the question we asked about uh, whether they'll contact you or not, but I feel like it's going to be either way, like I said. 
For some of you, it's like they're waiting for when you're ready. For others of you, it's like they're ready and they want to make contact. So like I said, it's going to kind of go either way. And I know it's kind of opposite there, but it's not like pile one where I didn't feel like they were going to make contact soon. This is like... But I think you guys will know what that could be. If you like had that pattern, like I mentioned, then you might be the one to reach out and they're waiting for that. But uh, for some of you, they will be reaching out to you. So that's what we've got though for you guys that chose pile number two. I really do hope it gave you some insight into your person and uh, I'd love it if you guys let me know in the comments below um, what you thought and how you felt about the reading. And uh, like I said, thank you so much guys for the previous blowing up of comments in, in my last video. I really was blown away by how many people commented <laughs> just by me simply asking and I appreciate the support so much. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, all that information is down below in the description box. It, there's a link to Fancy Store where you can purchase a reading and of course there's also my um, Amazon wish list and as many of you know um, I always do a reading as a thank you um, for somebody who does get something off my Amazon wish list so it's something I've been doing for the past year now and uh, I've really found it to be a blessing so that's also another way to get a reading with me but it's either way however you like it but um, I'm wishing you all the very very best take care of yourselves and I will see you on the next reading Hey guys, if you chose pile number three, this is going to be your reading. This is a venturing. And uh, well, let's get into your person uh, and see what's on their mind. What are they thinking about you? How are they perceiving you? What's, 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 up, what's up in the head? Okay, so we have, starting out, the lion. So lions to me represent bravery. Um, and as well in this deck, it, it represents mastery, pride as well. You know, um, so this person could see you as holding your head very high at this time. Uh, maybe you guys are looking regal and uh, perhaps some of you have kind of, uh, you know, may maybe you guys are displaying some sort of sense of pride in your life uh, in some way. As well, lions remind me of like leadership as well. So maybe you're taking some sort of mastery and leadership in your own life and kind of going for certain things in your life. Um, for, yeah, so like I said, for some of you, they might be thinking that, you know, and, and and like I said, in other piles as well, this could be reversed energy as well. This person could be also thinking that they have to kind of wear a mask of their own, of pride and leadership and sort of like tough, tough guy, you know, be, being the tough guy um, type of thing. But um, we also have protected. You are safe and divinely guided. So. There can be, for some of you, like, they may be putting up this protective front. You may be putting up this protective front. It's very funny because we had a very similar energy in pile number two um, with the home type of cards there. And now we're getting this here uh, as well. So there might be a bit of a protective stance. For some of you, they might even perceive you as having protection around you. Maybe you have some friends or a friend in particular or somebody around you um, that may be kind of guarding you in some way. That may not resonate for all of you, but I had to say it because it was on, in my head. So um, we have the lovers, the four of cups, and the four of pentacles, the star, the King of Swords, and the Eight of Cups. Ooh, okay, let's see here. So I, with the Four of Pentacles, I often do see that card as a card of self-preservation. So they could be perceiving you as, as such, you know, kind of holding back with um, perhaps not interested in them, okay? Uh, maybe some of you are giving the silent, like obviously no contact. So it may be for some, they might be thinking that you're giving them the silent treatment or not really interested in them at all. Uh, for some, they may see this as a punishment for others of you. It's like disinterest, complete disinterest. Maybe you're just focused on yourself, you know? Um, like I said, that's probably gonna depend on why you guys are in no contact. Um, if there's been like an argument, of course, there might be a different perception than someone who's just simply not talking um, without any problems necessarily behind it. Uh, with the lovers, okay, and the star, there's definitely hope here for some sort of romantic outcome. And uh, I do see the star as, as a very hopeful card, one that wants to repair, to fix, to heal, to endure you know, and have a fresh start, um, 
vulnerability is also something the star usually is, is a naked woman so it shows a sense of vulnerability this person could feel as if they can't be very vulnerable with you at this time we have that king of swords someone who's a bit guarded um you can see that swords in front of his heart so he's sort of just like mm, you know uh kind of hiding with words or a tough demeanor rather than, you know, opening up that heart and speaking truth and, uh, you know, real feelings as well. And with the Four of Cups, it, it, there is a disinterested type of vibe here. So this person could be acting disinterested. It could be how they're perceiving you, though, too. And um, we have the Eight of Cups. So there's this idea that there's moving on that um, things are over or that there's no more, that you're not really willing to perhaps fix things or to, or, well, <clears throat> sorry, for others of you, it's just like they might just perceive you as like, it, and if it's not like a fix things type of situation, it could just be that they see you kind of heading off in your own direction, um, doing your own thing in life and, you know, perhaps, you know, leaving them behind in some way or just not really seeing them. Her back is turned. We have Pisces. What is Pile number three? Person thinks of them. We have Taurus. So Pisces and Taurus. Interesting because I do think of this is like a lack of physical presence to me. Um because Taurus, to me, can be about the physical reality. Again, there could be, actually, for some of you, it's like a focus on your finances for some of you. That's going to be probably rare, but we have that Four of Pentacles. So it could be that you're focusing on your finances um, and perhaps your dreams. The 12th house, Pisces, uh, in the 12th house, do speak of, like, isolation, um, dreams, spirituality, um, losses as well. So there could be, like, a loss of... Uh, a loss of this connection, um, essentially. Taurus is associated with Venus, so this could be like a loss of love. Um, they could be feeling that you've lost your love for them or your interest or your desire for them. There also could be, like I said, this hope, hopeful feeling in them that somehow things will kind of come back into alignment um, someday. Because of that star as well, like in, in Pisces, Pisces is a very dreamy house, it hopes, it dreams, it wants, it desires, but yet it's not always easy to grasp, like, and that's kind of that energy of that Taurus, you know, second house is more like physical in a way, so... I do think that this person, and, and I got this in the second pile as well, I would say that they find you to be very attractive. They think of you as very attractive, as having a lot to um, offer in that in that sense. But at the same time, it's like they can't have it, or it's somehow not available to them, like you're not available to them. Um, for some of you, of course, with Pisces, 12th house, that can be about separation, like it, as in you guys are in different countries. Um, the 12th house can talk about that. Many people, well, anyway, I won't, I won't get into astrology. I'll try not to, to talk your, all, your ears off about astrology. <laughs> I'll try to save that for, I really want to do a video on Britney Spears' chart. I was looking at it today because I found this like free Britney video and I was like, oh my God, her chart totally talks about this. <laughs> her uh, lifestyle or whatever that's been happening to her. Let's see. We have wish. Make a wish with a dandelion in the wind. Wow, I love it because she's kind of like, okay, this isn't a dandelion, but she kind of looks like she's like smelling a flower, like wishing, and it looks like a daisy, like, uh, you know how you pick the petals? <laughs> like, should I, like, you know, you can say, like, uh, they love me, they love me not, you know, type of thing. We have music. It says, there is a melody to be heard in the deepest parts of the woods if only we listen. With music, I wonder, I do think that a lot of you have a song with this person. Oh, shoot. I just threw those cards. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like, oh, you know, I think that, you know, I think that there, uh, there's a certain song, a lot of you, that this person associates with you. And when it comes on, they get hit with it. We have hope here. An idea like a single acorn can start a wondrous forest. So there's that confirmation. I'm sorry. I'm trying to see if any other cards fell. I like totally like through like half the deck <laughs> that was ridiculous oh you should have seen that okay anyways um 
but no, there's this sense of hope. Like I mentioned hope and there we go. There's that confirmation that there's like still hope here that maybe something in the future could come out of this. But I, at the same time, there might be also a, a loss of hope for some of you. Like I said, this is these are general readings. So it depends on like how long you've been out of contact with somebody, what the exact situation is between the two of you. Um, for some, they might be perceiving you as hoping for a better future, you know, um, be, besides them. <laughs> you know, they might have lost a good thing and they know that you're kind of going in a different direction, that you're kind of protecting yourself and, from this energy or this connection. For those of you where it's been negative, um, you know, where things have kind of turned sour. With music, like I said, I really do get the sense, and that's funny because Pisces reminds me very much of music. So you guys might have a musical, you might get music synchronicities about this person, they may get them about you. Um, I think that in that way you might mirror each other. Um, if you do get songs that kind of like come up and you think of that person, when you hear it, they also have a song that, you know, they hear and they think of you. Yeah. Let's see. I might take a few more cards here. I'm going to take... I've been using the language of flowers and whispering woods today. Let's use the language of flowers. Okay, spirit guide. Pound and bird. Person. What are they thinking of? Red rose. Courage. Be brave, be strong, and believe. Again, I talked about courage earlier with the lion. <laughs> So, you know, making courageous moves, doing your own thing, going in your own direction, um, putting on a front as well. We also have longevity, plan for and to take the dedicated path. So, again, planning for your future, seeing where things want to go, you know, kind of trekking in the direction of where you want to be in life um, or away from them in some cases, you know. And then we have, like I said, this Mexican marigold. So it's a renewal, time to begin again, stronger, better. Again, a lot of strength here. This person sees you as very strong. And in a, in a period of where you're kind of moving on towards something in your life. Now, this may be, like I said, away from them. It could be just towards things that you want to do in your life. Um, you know, kind of your own goals. And like I said, that could be away from them. But um, I do feel like this person has a hope that somehow you guys will return together um, again. Or, or somehow fix things um, or repair things in the future. Or that... Things will be amiable between the two of you, uh, but uh, it's it seems like it's only a hope because I really feel like this person doesn't quite see it. Um, as it's like there's this hope, but it's like the logical part of them says like no, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that's what I'm getting for you guys. I chose pot number three. I hope that this reading helped you. I would love if you guys left me a comment below letting me know what you thought or just anything really. I asked a question in the beginning if you want to go answer that one. I was curious to get to know you guys. But thank you so much for blowing up my comment section in the last reading. I was shocked and genuinely like so excited and like oh my god I thought it was going to be annoying and you guys all were so kind and like oh my gosh I was just I was I was so cheesed out even though I know that's not apparently a, that's apparently a phrase only I say um <laughs> I don't know if you guys uh saw my that on my Instagram apparently I've always said that like I'm cheesed out like I'm shy I'm excited I'm like ee! and then apparently like nobody else has heard that phrase and I'm like what but I say it all the time <laughs> I did not make that up. Anyways, um, so I was very cheesed out, as I would say. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate you guys. Um, if you would like to have a personal reading with me, all that information is down below in the description box. There's a link to my Etsy store where you can get all kinds of different personal readings. Um, there's one questions, two questions, three questions, four questions, six month readings, uh, you know, forecast readings, some monthly forecasts, and all that kind of stuff. I'm actually thinking about putting out some new types of readings so keep an eye out I think I want to do like some specific spread type readings um, but I'm still kind of thinking about it I have all these different little ideas in my head all the time and I don't always have time to do everything I want to do but uh, yeah and then of course guys there's my Amazon wish list and, and as many of you know who've been following me for the past year or so I've been doing you know, readings, personal readings as a thank you. So if you do like to do the gift giving route, I do do readings as a thank you. So you will get a reading if you get something off my wish list, no matter how big or small or, you know, it's, 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 it's always appreciated and given a thank you. So 
Anyways, wishing you all the very, very best. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you all in the next reading. Take care. Hey guys, if you chose pile number four with this rainbow moonstone, this is going to be the reading for you about your person. So what is going on in their head as you're in no contact situation with them? That's what we're going to be looking at. So let's get started. We have the glove. Ooh, you know, gloves to me. Well, of course I see daintiness when I see this. So they might be seeing you as a bit dainty at this time. Delicate. I think of delicacy when I see gloves uh, like that because they're kind of like Victorian looking. Um, let me see here what the, the book says actually because I didn't look. It says money, status, and complacency. So some of you, they might be seeing you as being a bit complacent, like you're not making a move towards them or that you're not really doing much um, to reach out. Um, for some of you, it might be that you are focused more on your st status, on your money. Uh, so some of you might be money focused or kind of just focused on career or again, maybe you guys are trying to build something in your life and they just see you kind of going after that, uh, you know, instead of them. Let's see here. We also have the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Wands, the Strength card, and let's see, the Hanged Man, clarifying the Knight of Cups, the Judgment card, okay, and then the Queen of Pentacles. Wow, yeah, so look at this, and we have Release. Radical acceptance and surrender can help you let go. So there is an idea perhaps for some of you on this person's end that you've released them or that you're trying to release them. Uh, we have that strength in the Queen of Pentacles. That Queen of Pentacles is telling me that this person perceives you as perhaps really focused on your, your money or on your self-value, on your self-worth. Um, this can be your, your financial stability as well, of course, for some of you. Um, so they just might be seeing that you are kind of putting more effort into yourself. Uh, we have the Strength card too. So, uh, you know, with the Strength card, you know, I think of somebody who's very kind of like, well, this girl in particular looks kind of like she's sort of, I just said like every kind of word that I shouldn't have said. Uh, I just threw Stop. <laughs> like, like, so, say, ugh, I cannot talk. <laughs> oh, this is a Mercury retrograde. We're in the shadow period. Um, and I'm, it's going to be messing me up. So be prepared, guys. I'm going to be a mess. Anyways. <laughs> No, but this is a lot about self-control. The strength card to me does talk a lot about self-control and self-mastery and the masterment of your temper, the masterment of your demons. It's it's a lot of control. And I can see that this person perceives you right now, especially as someone who's very strong and able um, to do something, to take care of yourself, to kind of get what you want out of something. But in a gentle way, there is a sense of propriety about you, I would say that they see. And then, of course, we have this Knight of Cups and Knight of Wands. So, with the Knight of Cups and the Hanged Man, well, the Hanged Man re represents this idea of kind of being withdrawn, of going within, about pulling back and sacrificing as well, too. The, the, the Hanged Man can represent sacrifice. And uh, this person might feel like you're, they're sac you're sacrificing your love or your feelings in some way. That, and that's just their perception. I'm just repeating what I might be, you know, picking up here. Um, but I do feel like this person has romantic feelings for you. They think of you in a romantic sense. They'd love to come towards you. Um, for those of you where there's been like an argument or some difficulties, with the Judgment card, it can talk about wanting to kind of create this clean slate, of wanting to, to restart something, to kind of rush in and be like, hey, what's up? And, you know, start over, kind of like the scientist by Coldplay, like going back to the start. Or, again, just having a new start, a fresh start. Um... For some of you, if this is no contact, and, and there's never been a problem between the two of you, you've never really fought or something, it's just never gotten off the ground or anything like that, it could be that they're trying to like think about how to come back in um, or how to start something in general, um, how to kind of kickstart some kind of a beginning with you. For others you know, of you, there could be like this idea of like an epiphany, like a light bulb coming on that they want to be with you, that they, but at the same time, we have that hangman kind of contradicting um, movement. So there's kind of contradictory feelings. 
we have Saturn coming out here. So there's a sense of duty and responsibility. This person could be older than you. You could be older than them. But uh, it could also represent this uh, boss type of relationship or somebody that uh, is, well, Saturn, like I said, it is a, it is a disciplined uh, it is a disciplined planet. It's a planet of discipline, responsibility. So um, at, at one point, this person could see you as being very disciplined and self-contained at this time. But as well, they might feel like they need to be like that too about some of these feelings they might be having. You know, they might have these thoughts about reaching out romantically, but they're like, no, I better not. Um, you know, for for whatever reason that may be, and that, and that could be because they feel like there there's multiple reasons. You know, this is a, a general reading, so I can't. You know, I could mention a few, and some of them may resonate, and some of them may not. Um, but there's that idea of perhaps restriction or needing to to make the right choice. We have the sun as well. Let me see. I'm gonna get one more. I think. Call number four is person. Libra. So, okay. In, as well, so we have this like discipline type of uh, energy of Saturn. And like I said, again, there could be like the, again, this uh, idea that you are focusing on your status, on your money, on your goals, and your drives, right? We have the sun here. There could also be this idea that you're shining pretty brightly. Some of you might be really live in your sun sign. Some of you might be, even be sharing sun, sun sign sun sign memes you know like those little like images where <laughs> you're like oh pisces and then it says some you know type of thing there um <laughs> if you guys are you know on the same like you know instagram or like facebook or something but uh for others of you though there is this like again this drive towards they're perhaps perceiving you as being very driven at this time very disciplined and with libra i can definitely sense a romantic feeling here i mean there is there's also a beauty to you as well, just like I got in the other piles, no matter male or female, it doesn't matter. There's a beauty, there's an attraction, there's a, there's an allure here. But again, for some of you, that this person might feel like you guys need to balance things out, or you guys are kind of doing your own thing, and you can't really tip the scales. Maybe... For, yeah, maybe for some of you, there's like, if, if there were a move to be made or a contact to be made, maybe it would tip the scales in some way, kind of create a disbalance. Maybe there's something, um, maybe they feel like you don't have enough room for them in your life or vice versa. Or maybe you guys, it's a mutual thing where maybe like it doesn't work out, you know, the way that they would want it to. But I do see this desire for partnership, right? The Libra does uh, represent that seventh house, kind of one-on-one -on -one relationships, partnerships, and... Uh, that kind of vibe, um, justice as well, of course, and balance. So coming to an agreement or wiping things clean, uh, saying what's, you know, kind of coming to each other on equal terms is another thing here that this person would probably like to do. We have express your creativity in a way that is fun. <clears throat> and it's okay to do that thing that you've been wanting to do. Wow, okay, so this, I don't even know why I grabbed these. <laughs> I just sort of, sort of into in my intuition. But um, with that, express your creativity in a way that's fun. Again, this person might be seeing you as kind of, if they do have access to your social media, you could be posting pictures of yourself or something or showing off something. Uh, if you guys post pictures of like things you're doing or that you're making or something like that, it's like they might be checking you out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and liking what you're doing and then it says it's okay to do that thing you've been wanting to do so some of you might be actually going after something you've wanted to do previously um, if you told them you wanted to do something and then you kind of are doing it now um, they might think okay they're doing the thing that they've wanted to do in their life you know what I'm saying hopefully that made sense like say you had wanted to go travel or something and then you go on that trip or you know you, you said you do some project, and then they see you actually doing it. Okay, so. Number four. Person. We have geranium, virility. Shake it up a little, you've got this. So there's a confidence, and, <clears throat> sorry. There's a confidence here that you seem to, to have for them. Like, uh, in their eyes, anyways. We have nestert nestertium, what? Nastertium. 
Ooh, that's a toughie. <laughs> Grounding. It says the beginning is where you need to be. Oh, you remember when I said that go back to the start? Um, ah, that Scientist by Coldplay, that song came to my head. The beginning's where you need to be, and that's what that song's about. like going back to the beginning, kind of like rewinding. Can we start this over type of vibe. Whoa, okay, I like that. That came out. That was a confirmation. And then we have Fusha. True feelings. Within you is all you need to know. And maybe this person wants to express some sort of true feelings to you, but they're afraid. And for some of you, we have that. If some of you had a feeling about this person, and then you told them, I had a feeling and I should have trusted it, they feel like crap about that. That's just like specific um, messages for some of you. Um, very specific. So I know that's not going to resonate with everyone. But like I should have known better. If you said something like that before to them, I had a feeling you'd be like that. We have the night. Find comfort in the night where the world switches off and the stars burn bright. Maybe some of you are at night owls. Again, but look at that. It fell over the sun. Maybe some of you are at t different time zones too. <laughs> where when it's daytime for them, it's nighttime for you. But uh, for others of you, uh, this person might think of you as kind of like being in the dark for them. Like they can't really see you in some way, you know? Maybe you, like again, with the night, it's like find comfort in the night. Where the world switches off, so it's like taking a break. Kind of withdrawing, doing your own thing. Uh oh, something popped over, I think. Where'd it go? Never mind. Pot number four is person. Think of them right now. Wish. Make a, dandy, uh, make a wish with a dandelion in the wind. So this person might be wishing for some sort of contact, for some romantic moment to happen between the two of you, of wanting uh, to take your hands in some way. And we've got origins. Remember your roots and let go. Enjoy the pulsing light of the firefly, but don't hold on too tight. So there might be this idea that they're trying not to hold too tight on this. They might be thinking that they shouldn't hold too tight on this. Um, because we have remember your roots. So it's like there might be something between the two of you, like some sort of structure or idea or situation that sort of is like remember that this can't be or something like that or that it's too difficult or that there are too many uh, problems here or, or something like that. Um, Perhaps again with that beginning and let's go back to the start. Maybe they're wishing that you would remember the beginning that they somehow like you guys could just go back and like um, re Redo things over in a different way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said that can it's for some of you might resonate a little bit differently, but um, Like again, let's go back to the start. Oh, I forgot to tell pile number one I channeled the song for them in the beginning when I was shuffling and I forgot to tell them it. Oops Maybe I should tell that to them <laughs> in the comments or something. But anyways, uh, that song I got here, that when, I, when I'm just reading the cards, I didn't really get that when I was shuffling. Um, but that's definitely a theme. I think that you guys should listen to that song. <laughs> but uh, I wish you guys all the best. I'm gonna stop here and let this reading be as it is for now, current energies. And uh, I wish you all the very, very best. Leave me a comment below if you like the reading. Thank you, and thank you guys. If you didn't hear the intro, I appreciate all the comments you guys left on the last reading. You guys blew that thing up. I still haven't even been able to reply to everyone. There were so many comments, and I was feeling so excited and happy about it, and ah, I was just sh shy and shocked, honestly, because I really thought that I would get annoyed comments. <laughs> I was like, uh, I wasn't even going to post the reading, actually. I was going to, I had it sitting there since last week, and I was I was like, I'm not going to post this um, because I'm gonna, it's too embarrassing. I asked for comments and then people are going to be like, you're stupid or something or you're needy. And I just, I know some people don't know how it works and, and comments do help. They really do. And uh, but I'm just very flattered and, and thankful that I have such followers that were willing to sort of, you know, and friends. A lot of you are, so many of you are my friends, and, and we talk on Instagram, and I really enjoy it, and I thank you, each and every one of you. 
for, you know, reaching out to me and I wish I could have the time to talk to each and every one of you all the time. <laughs> I wish it. <laughs> the ones that message me especially. I wish I had that much time. Um, but I wish you all the very, very best. If you want a personal reading with me, that information is down below in the description box. And uh, there's a link to my Etsy store, right? So you can purchase readings there. And as well, of course, there's my Amazon wish list. And as many of you know, for the past year or so on my channel, I've always had it so that people can get a reading as a thank you. Um, so if you do get something off my wish list, I always will, you know, thank you, thank you for that with a reading. Um, so I always offer that. Um, and some people really do like gift giving. I like receiving things in the mail. So, you know, it works out both ways. <laughs> I think, I think it's a good exchange, but, uh, you know, and, but of course you can still just buy a reading of course too. So, uh, it's just all up to you, but I thought I'd mention your options and I wish you all the very, very best. Take care of yourselves and I will see you all in the next reading.